Hello people, I'm Tom Heats and today we're going to talk about inputs and outputs of a transaction object, especially in Bitcoin. So let's have a look into some general information. A uh, transaction is, yeah, I have to say a pretty important component of a blockchain because in, it enables you to send actual value between one person and another. And to make a transaction, you have to make a, a transaction script. You have to verify it with your, with your signature and you have to propagate it to the network. And fortunately we have wallets which have the, all this functionality built in and they are doing this for us. So we don't have to worry about such things. So let's assume you have sent some Bitcoin to a friend and you are now looking into a block explorer. If you're not familiar with this term with block explorer, it's just a web page which lists all blocks and uh, all transactions which are included in the block. And you can look up yeah, various kinds of information. Right now I'm looking at a sample transaction. At the top you see the transaction hash. And what's now important is you have to know that on the left side you have inputs, on the right side you have outputs. So a transaction has inputs and outputs. And this might not be familiar with you because if you look at a wallet, you just have a send and a receive button and yeah, maybe it shows you the balance, but it's not a transaction is not listed like this. So if it's the first time you're seeing such a transa transaction, you have to know a transaction has inputs and outputs. So let's go to inputs. Let's now assume you have got some bitcoins from Marcus, from your friend. He sent you 0 0.2 bitcoin. Your mom sent 0 0.3 bitcoin and your brother sent you, he was very kind, he sent you seven po uh, 0 0.7 bitcoin. So now you have 1.2 uh, Bitcoin in your wallet and you actually want to do something with this. So these are actually outputs. I will cover outputs right at the moment. Um, so if you make a transaction, these outputs will serve as inputs for your transaction. So if you make a transaction, you take either all of your inputs or some of your inputs as an input of the trans transaction. Let's look at outputs. So, uh, mistake. So here you see you, you, you want to buy a coffee at a coffee shop and this coffee costs 0 0.1 Bitcoin, pretty expensive. And you now take the 0 0.2 Bitcoin from Marcus, you take as an input and you, this transaction has three outputs now. It has 0 0.1 Bitcoin, which are going to be transferred to the coffee shop, 0 0.09 Bitcoin, which are actually being back transferred to your address, to a new address probably, because your wallet will probably uh, generate a new address, and a fee of 0 0.01. So you have one input and it creates three outputs. And these outputs, um, will serve as new inputs in a transaction you're going to make in the future. And what's very important here is you have to know that you have to use 100% of your inputs. And with 100%, I don't mean that you, if you want to make a, a, a transaction of 0 0.1 Bitcoin, you have to use the 0 0.2 from your friend, the 0 0.3 from mom, and the 0 0.7 Bitcoin. So you don't have to take all these uh, Bitcoins if you want to pay uh, 0 0.1 Bitcoin, but you have to take, for example, the 0 0.2 Bitcoin as an input. So all 100%, not just 0 0.1, because there's also a fee. And yeah, if something is left from the funds, um, something is going, is getting back transferred to a new address, to, to your address. So let's sum it up. You have, you want to make a transaction. 
you have some Bitcoin on your wallet and these are unspent outputs. So you haven't spent these outputs yet and you are now going to take some of those or in, in some cases you take everything and they serve as an input for the new transaction you're going to make. And the new transaction is also making new outputs. In this case, three outputs. And the one you, with the 0 0.09 Bitcoins, which are going, going to be back transferred to your wallet, you will be able to use them again as an input for, for a transaction you're going to make anytime soon. Okay and you might have also heard about the UTXO set and this is just a, a collection of all unspent outputs in the blockchain and full nodes can modify those and this UTXO set is permanently shrinking and growing because you know almost every, every second the uh, transactions are being made and there are always new unspent outputs for uh, new addresses and they have to be updated and the full nodes uh, can modify this um, and they, they the UTXO set there are sequ sequency numbers and they are they are referring to an address and if you make a new address you don't actually have the Bitcoin I guess you might notice that you don't actually own them you just have to the right to use some of these bitcoins or uh, a part of a bitcoin as an input for your transaction so you have the right to use them to spend them and if you spend them you lose the right so you yeah or your your um your funds are getting less and this utx set is permanently updated and it's a collection of all unspent outputs and if we look at a wallet you might actually wonder well how do they calculate the balance of my bitcoin funds for example because if you look at a bank account it's yeah in, th in this case it's pretty easy to to estimate uh, the the amount of of money you you own it's it's pretty simple in, in a bank account and in bitcoin it's little bit easier but um, your yeah, wallets do this for us and what they actually do is they look through or they go through the whole blockchain and search for unspent outputs which are referring to your address they are calculating the sum of these unspent outputs and they show you how many bitcoins you can spend um, yeah depending on the unspent outputs you you are having and the wallet actually is uh, yeah has all the functionality built in it so that the blockchain itself is limited in its in its uh, functionality the wallet actually goes through the blockchain calculates it and and shows it a balance so yeah it's pretty neat and you could probably do this yourself without the wallet would be some work to do this I guess um, yeah but um, to summarize everything what we have heard we know that you can use when we make a transaction we can use inputs um, from our coins we own so if we own 7 points, uh, 0 0.7 Bitcoin for example we can use them as inputs we have to use 100% of the inputs and the unspent outputs so the 0 0.7 unspent outputs we are using as inputs for a new trans transaction and new um, new outputs are being made like one for the actual recipient one for for your address and one for the fee it can also be that there are five inputs and 10 uh, outputs if you're sending to different addresses and using different different unspent outputs for your inputs so this can vary quite much yeah but in this case we took a, a simple approach and used one input and three outputs 
So I hope you were able to follow me. You, uh, you could understand uh, the inputs and outputs. If you liked this video, I would be able, I, I would be glad, sorry, to uh, if you gave this video a, a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, I'll be happy you, if you subscribe. And yeah, I also wanted to mention that the on-chain uh, tutorials, they are first, they were following the first principle approach. So we are starting uh, pretty simple and dig digging deeper into more advanced topics in the future. So see you next soon.